Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Full Court Press. This week we're going to be reviewing our quarterfinals and semifinals of the rec ball playoff season. Starting off with the first game of the day, it was Martin versus McCullough. So I was in this game, we won 57 to 50, but I have to say this game was a lot closer than it said on the score sheet. Uh, it was just a game of runs actually. Drew did a really good job coaching. Uh, we were up like 17, I believe, in two different points. So he really got his team back in it with some clutch timeouts, some good subs. Uh, but we were definitely the better team in my opinion, trying not to be biased. But like down the stretch, we definitely controlled the clock and we handled it well. And it came down to free throw shooting at the end of the game. And uh, I think that's our specialty and what makes us good. So we definitely shot, the well, shot, shot it good at the charity stripe and ended up winning the game. Moving on, we have Meyer 52, Cespedes 43. Cespedes kind of underperforming this game. You know, you had Jack really go off the 16 points. You know, David Eli duo right there really stepping up big in playoff time. Rahul and Julian, you know, they had a great season, but unfortunately it came to an end. All right, the next game of the day is Lombardo McGinn versus Team Rams Alexander. Um, they take the win 63-47. to 47. Um, this was a good game in the first half. We were tied for the most part. And you then guys we were winning. For yeah, we were, we were winning for the first quarter. And then they just ran away with it because Jared and Tommy put on takeover mode as usual. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the next game, the last game of this quarterfinals is Neji 38 to Henderson's 37. Not our best game. Um, heartbreaking loss. Connor hit a shot with two seconds left to uh, take the lead, but it was just a great game by Team AJ. They had great defense. We weren't really ready for. They threw like ten def t uh, defenses at us. Um, not our best game offensively. And Will Edinburgh had a really good game to kind of put them over the edge. All right, now we're moving on to the semifinals. Two insanely good games. The first game went into overtime. Martin forty-four to Myers forty. Um, this is, I have to say, this is the worst game we've played all year, and Meyer could not miss a shot. Jack went off, Eli went off, David was getting everybody the ball, everybody open, Brady, defensive stop, he must have had five or six jump balls each quarter. He was just a beast, ripping the ball out of everybody's hands, but definitely our worst game. We came out really slow, and I, I'm not sure if it was because we played a back-to-back, -back or we just thought that Meyer would be an easier opponent because they're a lower seed. But we really flipped the switch halfway through like the fourth quarter. We were down a few, and then we really got our clutch players in and eventually came back and then took it to overtime and then really pulled away. And then a clutch three by Eli cut it back down to four, but they didn't have enough time. So this game was really a seven-point game, but good shooting by Eli, I guess. AJ, you know a person we don't really give a lot of credit to is Zach Bybee. Yeah. He's very good, very reminiscent of uh, Dennis Schroeder, in my opinion. You know, very quick, he has a great handle. He, um, pretty decent shot, reliable player to have as a starting point guard. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, Zach hasn't played every single game with us, so I haven't really gotten a feel of him. But he's definitely getting hot right now, which is like the perfect time to get hot. I think on our team, you have Brendan, Gray, and Zach. Here you go, go getters for a bucket at the end of the game. Zach's really good at creating his own shot, and he, he'll catch you with a pump fake. And if you don't fall for it, he'll just drain the three over you. And we saw that a few times in both of our past two playoff games. So definitely Zach's coming alive, and I'm uh, really glad to be a part of that. Yeah, Zach definitely hasn't lost his step since uh, middle school, middle school uh, ball. But, AJ, I want to say something real quick. Do you think that the, the absence of Jake Dapolite and playoff Luke Brackett, you know, played a part in Meyer's loss? Um, so the first time we played Meyer, Eli wasn't there. So we haven't played the big three straight up. But definitely Luke Brackett. Like, I think that he might have helped us because, as I said earlier, we had no energy. And he definitely would have brought the energy. And I think we would have stepped up to the, plate, to the plate and played a better game. But it could have gone either way with Luke Brackett. Who knows? He could have, like, scared people in the paint, intimidated Hall of Fame to, like, win them the game. But he was definitely missed in this game. Yeah, disappointed with Jake Dapolite. I know he's in Germany, but... Rec Ball's got to take priority there. Yeah, he's got he's got to come home for these games. What are you doing, Jake? Disappointing for sure. I believe Luke Brackett is also with him in Germany. I don't know if that's true, but he was sick. He's not in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you heard that. <laughs> okay, uh, you gotta dig deep for these rec games. This is do or die. The next game and the final game of the week was Lombardo McGinn versus Neji Steinberg. Lombardo takes the win, fifty-one to forty-eight, after an insane game. Yeah, that was, that was probably the greatest game in rec ball history. I mean, 
there were there were so many storylines. There was a potential like twenty eight to three type comeback game for Team Neji. I mean, they 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 were so bad in the first half. I, they put up eleven, I believe, and t entirely in the first half, and then they just kind of came alive in the second half. Thought I was going into overtime. Tommy hit an incredible shot to uh, to give them the win, but I mean, what a game, really. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you, Connor and uh, Mr. Neji. I was ready to leave at halftime when you guys barely broke double digits. Connor, the shots weren't falling for you, but you definitely reset at halftime and definitely. ended up knocking, how many threes? Five, six threes? Two and one threes. Two and ones Two converted. And ones. I've never seen Neji play a game like that. Like, it was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. I there were some great shooters in this game. Jared, you, Tommy, Andy had Connor, a as well. Andy had a few clutch buckets. Greg facilitated pretty well. This is just a, I guess, evenly matched game in the second half. But definitely the first half won you this game, I think. Honestly, yeah, I'd agree. Um, it kind of felt like at the end of the game, we were just kind of holding on, hoping they wouldn't outscore us because our offense was not very good in that second half, especially that third quarter, end of third quarter, the start of the fourth. We just could not have anything going. Yeah, what I noticed was like your free throw shooting. You guys were missing the front end, your one and ones. Yeah, so we had some, some one and ones, as you said, and you know that could have extended the lead to a potential like, you know, four, five, six point game, which really what I, like, brought it out of like, attention, really, and we kind of just didn't didn't clutch it up. Yeah, but the student section was getting rowdy whenever you guys were shooting. You know, nobody wanted, nobody really wanted Lombardo McGinn to win. Hey, we love it, man. We love it. <laughs> but I said, it, I said it before. Clutch, play, clutch players make clutch shots. Tommy steps up with two seconds left, pulls it from the, I think they call it the volleyball line, and just drills it and sends Neji home. I was shocked when this happened because it was bouncing around. I feel like those those <laughs> prayer shots always end up just breaking off the backboard. But I've never seen it before. Hit, hit the backboard with so much pace, hit the rim, and then bounce back to the backboard and in. It's one, one heck of a roll, I guess. But One heck of a shot for sure. Yeah, for sure. I believe the score in the first quarter was somewhere between 28 and 3. Like, it was definitely yeah, close. Up, it was like 25 to 7. It was like 25 in the, uh, to first seven. quarter. They were winning by 20 points at some point. And then Neji just comes back with literally the comeback of the century. Like, I believe it would happen. I can't believe it, honestly. It was like 48 to 48 in the last in the last minute, and then Tommy just pulls up from half with an insane shot. If that game would have went to overtime, would it have been different? You know, we, we actually talked about this after. Um, me and Lombardo kind of agreed, like, we probably would not have won that game. The momentum completely shifted. You know, Neji had it all. Our defense was kind of slacking. We were all a little bit tired and gassed. Um, so I don't think we would have won that game, but, you know, we don't have to worry about that anymore. Credit to uh, Coach Neji, though. I mean, he must have had one, one uh, great halftime speech, you know, <laughs> get the team motivated, get them back <laughs> in this game. But also another thing I think they did really well, uh, we talk a lot about, like, the big three shooters for Team Lombardo, uh, Tommy, obviously you, uh, Jared, and uh, Michael Lombardo. The fact that only one of you guys was in double digits is, like, a huge win for Team Neji. Like, that's, that's so hard to do. I mean, you just leave one of those guys open, and they're going to hit it. So great job defensively for Team Neji. Yeah, they did a great job. Yeah, they had a lot of steals, I, I noticed, like on skip passes to the shooters. So I don't know if they just have user lurk, but uh, they definitely did a good job. They had a good game plan set up by Mr. Neji. And I definitely would have liked to see this game in overtime, for sure. I, I think that uh, you guys would have come out with it. I feel like you guys have pretty good coaching, and you guys could have like mentally reset. So I think that if you guys had like two minutes to rest, then the momentum would have been wiped and you guys would have just gone back to your bread and butter. The shooting and there's Ari getting boards, dishing out, or the dish to Ari for the easy lay, and I think you guys would have walked away with it either way. It's one of the biggest what ifs of the season. Yeah, definitely. But I definitely would have wanted to see that. But yeah, uh, I mean Ari was such a huge factor. I mean, especially in the first half, because like when because Team Neji they weren't hit many shots in the first half. But they didn't get any offensive rebounds either, because Ari would just go go all the way up, jump almost like to the top of the rim, and grab the board every time. Like that that was a huge thing for them, because they had no repeat chances a lot. Yeah, every yeah, time they didn't I really watch have this anyone to match up to Ari at all. Every time I watch this kid Ari play, I always think he's gonna just throw it down one of these times <laughs> on a putback dunk. He gets so high up. I've seen him almost dunk it. Like he does his like standing dunk at yeah. halftime where he almost makes it. I want to see him do it. He gets so close and these rebounds go straight up. I'm just <laughs> waiting for him to just throw it down, and that would just kill any momentum. Must be saving it for the championship. I'm worried.
Because if, if, if anybody gets dunked on, I might just like walk off the court. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be over. Yeah, make sure to check out that broadcast on Westboro TV. Uh, very great commentating by uh, Quinn Campbell and, and uh, James Braden. Now moving on to the final game of the rec ball season, the championship between Lombardo McGinn and Team Martin Sassetti. We got two members of each team, one member of each team right here, and the tension is rising. I can't, <laughs> <laughs> this game is going to be crazy. Yeah, we've played close twice, so I'm just looking for a good game. And we've uh, been on the losing end of it both times, but I hope that the, the crowd can put us over the top and finally beat the villains of the league and send them home crying. You know, hopefully the script has our team in the favor. <laughs> uh, you know, we played, us, as you said, we played twice before, and I think during our scrimmage, I was kind of thinking, like, what if this is the final, like, matchup? But now that it is, it's kind of crazy because, you know, we kind of have a, an idea of what each team will do. We're not completely underprepared. I think it will be a really, really good matchup. It will be very close. Definitely don't see it being a blowout at any point in the game. Yeah, I don't know. You guys blew us out in the regular season, and then we came back, so I don't know. What, what would happen? I get. I guess this game's a game of runs. It's just yeah, who gets it's a good, hot. It's a good take right who there. gets hot and then who can reel themselves back in and then come back better and just cut it, cut it down one possession at a time. But I definitely see this game coming down the wire. I'm looking for an overtime game. Uh, obviously, I'd season. like to see myself come out, come out on top, but I'm really just looking for a fun game and a, a good like full rec ball wrap up to the season. It's been a great season. Definitely. I feel like every season. single week we say this one was game of the year, yeah. game of the ages. We've said at least three episodes in a row. This has been a great year. No teams like an automatic win in this league. I mean, we just have to talk about how balanced it is. Every team like has a fighting shot in every game. You know, there's been many upsets in the mm -hmm. playoffs, which is, you know, not always super, super like rare or whatever, but I think the fact that we've had so many is makes the games more exciting, makes it you know, more people want to come to them as well. So mm -hmm. that's great. The amount of brackets busted. Yeah, yeah my yeah, brackets this week. It's been so crazy. Mm -hmm. It truly feels like March Madness, you know. Like, it's, it's the Westboro Madness this year. It's definitely a good well, intro to Thursday. I heard there's a, is there a theme for the championship game? <laughs> yes, there is. Uh, gray out theme, support team Martin. Join the team Martin student section. If you're supporting team Lombardo, we will, you will be kicked out of the student section. <laughs> We're only going for Team Martin here. But unfortunately, I do believe Team Lombardo McGinn will win this game. Um, um, one thing we haven't mentioned yet is that the fans really play a big factor into which team wins. Definitely. Because if a fan, if the team is rooting for you, and they usually, re they usually root for the underdog team, the team has a large chance of getting more momentum. And we all know that Team Martin and Team Lombardo really play off of momentum because as soon as they get hot, they just don't miss. Yeah, honestly, that was a huge factor in the AG Lombardo game. Is Definitely. Like, it felt like we just could not get a break because they're on a streak and the fans are, like, constantly booing you every time you make the smallest mistake and an AG's team has a great play. It just feels like it's never-ending. And you just got to tell your guys, like, calm down, calm down. But the only thing that can really stop a streak is a timeout and you only get two, I think, per half or something. I don't yeah. know what it is. But that fourth quarter must have been, like, 20 minutes. It yeah. felt so, so long. long yeah. It was just a... Just Neji stop after stop after stop, and it was just how quickly they could convert, and they just ran out of time, I guess. Definitely a fun game to watch, but I think this one might top it. Two, two of the, I, I think, the clear-cut top two teams. I don't think anybody other than us deserves to be in the championship. It, we've said it, like, during the regular season as well. <laughs> I don't so think Jake really sorry. liked that take. Uh, <laughs> Jake, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't love that take, but I understand why you would say it, but I think the the thing that I'm worried about for you guys, AJ, is we've always said the, the, your rec team is only as good as your role players and as your bench. And the thing that I saw in your game is in your overtime game when you guys had your like, top five out there and you didn't sub, there was no problems. You guys handled Team Meyer. Like, overtime, as good as the uh, regulation was, overtime didn't really ever feel that close. But I'm w worried about the other guys, and I think they really got to step up. I think you're... you're uh, Roller players, they need to have like really big game, you know, make smart passes, especially with a big crowd. Like a lot of people are inexperienced. Like I remember me last year uh, in the semifinal game, I heard the crowd and I, I had like so many turnovers. <laughs> like I, I was, I was playing, I was just so nervous. So I'm a little bit worried about that for you guys. Yeah, uh, we've been playing equal playing time the whole entire year, and I, I don't see why we would stop here. It's been working pretty well. I, I've grown a lot of trust from for our players that don't usually score as much, and there's definitely not one player on our team that I wouldn't pass the ball to in crunch time.
to make the open layup or an open three. Like I believe in my, our whole team and I definitely know that they'll step up when it matters. I mean, I can't really ask this of you, but I'm going to. Do you have a scheme for the finals? Do you have any plan to um, defeat Team Lombardo? I've just got word that we have a big, big practice tonight. Oh, so really? I don't even know if we have a practice. Big practice tonight. It's a little advantage, don't you think? Um, make a few calls, Mr. Martin. <laughs> He's pulling for us. We should do like an underground scrimmage <laughs> just to see. A little walkthrough of the script. Yeah. And that'll conclude this week of Full Court Press. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the Rec Ball Finals tomorrow night at 7.15 p.m. and the Middle School Finals right before that. Uh, the, great, the student section theme will be gray out. Make sure to wear gray unless you're rooting for Team Lombardo in which you will be kicked out of the student section. And signing off for Full Court Press. Also, potentially, either today or tomorrow, the All-Star Game details will be released, and stay tuned for that. And without further ado, thank you so much for watching, and see ya. The student section theme is gray out. Please wear gray. If not, you will be kicked out of the student section. And see there. Okay. Bro, no, way. Way. no way. No way. Twice in a row. Just say goodbye. Goodbye. Oh my god. What do I? I forgot what I say on these. Oh my god. It was honestly fine until that. Yeah. Last it was fine. It was like the last moment. Well, see you there. <laughs> See ya. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's too good. <laughs>